If there is one thing you can count on every election cycle, it's the countless headlines about black voters shifting to Donald Trump. It's the train that's never late. We start this week with the media's favorite parlor game powered by a New York Times Siena oversample poll, meaning they plussed up a relatively small sample of their main poll, and which the Times chose to report as follows, quote, black voters drift from Democrats, imperiling Harris's bid, poll shows. Their poll shows Harris leading Trump 78 to 15. Now, what's odd is that their poll contradicts a number of other recent polls and history that say otherwise. A Howard University poll from September shows Harris leading Trump among black voters in swing states, 82 to 12. A CBS YouGov poll released just a day after the New York Times showed Harris leading Trump, 87 to 12, among black voters. The debate about black voters also got a turbo boost from former President Barack Obama's message to men, and black men in particular, who might have hang-ups about voting for a woman. Over the weekend, Vice President Harris spoke with a popular social media destination, The Shade Room, think TMZ for black folks, where she responded to questions about Obama's message. What is also important is, one, to understand, like, as I said, I intend to earn the vote of everyone, including black men. Two, pay attention to everything that President Obama talked about, because he also talked about, at length, the danger of Donald Trump. The danger of Donald Trump in terms of somebody who has said that they would weaponize the Department of Justice against his political enemies, somebody who has referred to black immigrants in Springfield, Ohio, legal immigrants, as though they would eat their pets constantly perpetuating tropes. The vice president also sat down with Roland Martin for a comprehensive conversation about a broad range of issues from the economy to education, criminal justice and housing reform, Africa policy, voter apathy and disenfranchisement. Don't let anybody take you out the game. There is an intent to make it more difficult. There is an intent to suggest to a lot of folks that their vote won't matter. With the intention that people will not vote, which is an attempt to silence folks. This election is going to be no different. They've already started with the misinformation and the lies. Just today, Harris rolled out a series of policies for what she calls her opportunity agenda for black men, which includes forgivable business loans for black entrepreneurs, more apprenticeships for black male black male teachers, more research for sickle cell disease and other diseases that disproportionately affect African-American men. She's also calling for measures that ensure that black men have opportunities to participate as a national cannabis industry takes shape. By contrast, Donald Trump has laid out no policies that address specific concerns of most black voters. And no, Ice Cube's platinum plan is not on his Agenda 47 website. That's, that's Ice Cube's thing. Joining me now is Reverend Al Sharpton, president of the National Action Network and host of Politics Nation right here on MSNBC, and Jelani Cobb, dean of the Columbia School of Journalism and staff writer for The New Yorker. I love saying dean of the Columbia <laughs> Journalism. We, we, our dean is black. We love that. Okay, so let's talk about this. I, I just want to go in. It's just from a journalistic point of view, because you did write a really good piece in The New Yorker mm -hmm. about this. This trope that just comes around, I can go through all of the times it's been said. Headlines show Trump is going to win in 2016. Trump predicts he can win 95% of the black vote. Trump and the black vote is there a road to redemption. That's 2016. 2020, the Federalists. Why Trump's gains with black voters could swing the 2020 election. What's happening out there with black men and Trump? Little Wayne, Ice Cube, 50 Cent. Trump makes the final push for black voters. Like every time. Then we come to today. Trump is gaining ground with some black men. Here's how Harris can change their mind. Polls are just Republicans are making gains. Trump courts rappers. Is it literally is a train that's never late. Right. And it's literally never true. Yeah, I mean, first off, black America is not waiting on Little Wayne to tell us, like, how we're supposed to vote. Uh, no disrespect. But the other part of it, I think, is that, you know, this is the lowest form of journalism, the kind of poll chasing. Like, this thing happens, that thing happens. And then what you wind up doing is reifying statistical noise. You know, things that are outliers then become to seem like they are mainline, you know, they're, that they're valid assessments of what's going on. There's another thing here, which is fundamental, that if I were uh, in a newsroom talking about this, I would say, 
the old claim, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and so when we look at the level of loyalty, this is this number 78 to 15, there's not a scenario, not a realistic scenario in which Kamala Harris winds up with a smaller portion of but less than 80 percent of the black vote and likely far north of that. Right. Uh, but if you if you are going to make that claim, you need a lot more than one poll, a lot more than an oversample and a single poll. You need a consistent trend line that shows across various polls and various times and various places that this is where this vote is headed. We don't see that. Right. I mean, I, I, and we'll talk about this another day, but, you know, Maria Chisa Kumar from Voto Latino, they did a big, huge, like 3,000 person sample poll, which is very different from when The New York Times did their oversample of Latino voters. Very different numbers. And I mean, the thing about it is, Rip, you will find what you're looking for. You can go into a barbershop and find Sure. that one contrary brother that's like, I like Trump. Like, right. I could find that, right? But that's, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that that one guy or that one rapper who's, like, doing a video for Trump represents black men broadly. But if you're looking for that and you want to make a package about that, you can find that guy. And I think the problem with that is you can go all the way back. Let's go back to the to Clinton era. Clinton, Dole got 15 percent. 2000, when Al Gore was running, Bush got 12 percent. You can go to 2004, you were running for president, Bush got 13 percent. McCain got 5 percent. Romney got 11 percent. Trump got 14 percent. Trump got 12 percent in 2020. There are simply about 11 to 14 percent of black men who've been Republicans and been voting Republicans since 68. Mm -hmm. So you can keep finding those same brothers over and over again. That is not a trend. Well, no, it is definitely uh, something that we've seen. His vote has been consistent with Republicans before him. And in 20, he was even two or three points lower than the Republican candidate. So a lot of these polls are just their projections uh, from some people with a narrow polling base. But the thing that I would challenge is some of these guys, the rappers, give us what his policies are right. for black America. We demand that of a black woman yeah. who laid it out today. A million people given uh, loans, if they uh, given forgivable loans, yeah. uh, they will let it go at $20,000 uh, $20, if you've got something that's viable. That's a business plan. They claim to be businessmen, a lot of these rappers. And on to the medical uh, support, and et cetera. I don't even understand how we're even talking about Donald Trump and business in the same sentence. <laughs> when we had an a, a $8.3 trillion deficit and a supply chain disruption, he did nothing to stop the price gouging that some of the people were doing. He was president then. Right. He was president when George Floyd happened, president when Breonna Taylor happened, president when Ahmed Aubrey happened. What did he do? Oh, he got a Bible, went across the street, had the Secret Service clear protesters, and condemned the protesters. So what are we going to think he's going to do that he didn't do in the four years he was there?